Greetings and welcome to the introduction to physical science. In this lecture, we are going to look at a couple of different things. First of all, the formula mass or the way of looking at the mass of molecular compounds and how we looked at the mass and the atomic mass of various atoms. And now we want to see how that can work for molecules. And then we want to look at the concept of the mole. And the mole is a way of looking at very large numbers of things. And in fact, is an incredibly large number and tells us how many atoms of make up a specific substance. And because atoms are so small and there are so many of them, we need different sets of units such as the mole to be able to describe them. So let's go ahead and get started. First, we want to look at the formula mass, which is the sum of the average atomic masses. So the atomic weights of the component atoms. Now we can look at this in two different ways. First of all, we will look at it for covalent sub substances, which are things like uh, what we see here, where we have a carbon atom, and then we have uh, then we have a hydrogen atom here in the white, and then we have three chlorine atoms in the green. So we want to then add them up. This is one molecule, and we want to figure out the molecular mass of that molecule and we just do that by adding up the total atomic weight of each of these so one carbon has an atomic weight of 12 little over 12 atomic mass units hydrogen is a little over one and chlorine is close to 35 and a half and if you multiply those by the number of atoms in this case one carbon one hydrogen and three chlorines you get their subtotals here and you add those all up to get the total molecular mass of this molecule. So we can use this to find that molecular atomic mass of a molecule by adding up those of the individual atoms that compose it. Now we can do an example of this and let's look at the compound C13H18O8. Sorry, O2. And what we know from this, and this is what we call ibuprofen, a pain reliever. Well, there are 13 carbon atoms, so 13 of those times about 12 atomic mass units each. Hydrogen, there are 18 times about one atomic mass unit each. And two oxygens at 16 atomic mass units each. Now, we can then if we multiply those we would then get the totals for carbon hydrogen and oxygen and we can then add them together to get a total mass of 206.27 atomic mass units and that would be the formula mass for the ibuprofen. Now it's a little bit different when we look at other type of substances such as ionic substances. So when we look at ionic substances, remember these form into more of a lattice or crystal structure. So we do not just have a sodium chloride molecule. It's actually an entire lattice structure here. And we therefore it is not a molecular mass, but we still use the compounds formula and take the average atomic masses of those. So sodium chloride NaCl has one one element one 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 atom of sodium one of chlorine we look up their atomic masses and we add those together there's no weighting because they're simply one of each and we add that together to get the formula mass of 58.44 so it's not a molecular mass in this case as it would be for something with a covalent bond now we can do an example of this as well and let's look at in this case aluminum sulfate now aluminum sulfate here is al2 so4 and that so4 is repeated three times so remember when we have parentheses here this three outside means that we have three of everything inside that so we want this is the way we would normally write it this is the proper chemical formula but in order to get the formula mass we want to rewrite this to get the exact totals and we know that there are two aluminum so al2 there are going to be three sulfurs because there are three s's and three o4s so three sulfurs and then three times four is 12 oxygen atoms so al2 s3o12 would be what we would want to start start at 
to get the formula mass. Now we know there's two atoms and we multiply that by the average atomic weight of aluminum. So two aluminums, three sulfurs, multiply that by sulfurs, atomic mass, and oxygen, 12 of those multiplied by its atomic mass. And we get those totals. And we then add them up and find out that it would be the atomic mass of this would be 342.14 atomic mass units. So the next thing we want to look at is what we mean by the mole. So a mole of a substance is the amount where there are 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd entities. They could be atoms or they could be molecules. So a mole of something would have 10 to the 23rd, 6 times 10 to the 23rd of those of those atoms of those molecules. And this is also what we call Avogadro's number, sometimes written as N with the subscript capital A. So one mole of any element contains the same number of atoms as a mole of any other element. So if we have a mole of hydrogen, we have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of hydrogen. A mole of gold would be 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of gold. And then we want to look at what we mean by the molar mass, which is the mass in grams of one mole of the substance. So if we had this many atoms, how many grams would that correspond to? Now we can look at that and look at our table here. So we have, in this case, the, uh, the molar mass is the equivalent of the atomic or formula weight in atomic mass units. So we'll see that these two are exactly the same. So when we're looking for the molar mass of carbon, it is the same as the average atomic mass of carbon. Hydrogen, they are exactly the same, and so on down the table here. So the atomic mass are equivalent numerically, but they do represent different things. One is the specifically the mass of that of that uh, in atomic mass units. And this is how many grams one mole of that uh, of that would compose one mole of carbon would weigh 12 grams. So 12 grams a little less than half an ounce of carbon would have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms in it. Now we can look at examples here and let's look at one. First of all, we can look at getting moles from grams and nutritional guidelines will tell us that you're supposed to have about 4.7 grams of potassium per day. And we want to know how many moles would that be? Well, we can start off with what we know and we know the mass is 4.7 grams of potassium. And we can look up the molar mass of potassium. And if we can't find that easily, look up the atomic weight and remember that they're the same. So 39.10 grams per mole. Now, once we know that, we can then go ahead and calculate that we have 4.7 grams of potassium. And one mole of potassium is 39.10. So if we had one mole, we would have 39 grams. We know, therefore, right away that this is less than one mole because it's less than 39 grams. And we can go ahead and multiply that out to find out that we have 0.12 moles of potassium. And that is what you were, what you are recommended to have uh, on a daily basis based on nutritional guidelines. Now we can do another example of that. In this, we want to find grams from moles. And in this case, we're looking at a gas. We're looking at argon. And if a liter of air contains 9.2 times 10 to the negative fourth moles of argon, we want to find the mass. So we can do this the same way we looked at before. We know how many moles we have. And we know or can look up the molar mass of argon. And then we can do the same type of conversion that we had by before. And we had that 9.2 times 10 to the negative fourth moles of argon. And there are 39.95 grams per mole. Note that the moles of argon will cancel. So your units will then be grams of argon. And we find that that would be 
and that liter of air 0 0.037 grams of argon gas. So it's the same type of problem and the way to make sure you're getting the molar mass correct, whether you put it in the top or the bottom, make sure you're looking at your units. That's why it's very important to carry your units through and make sure that you're following them. Now we can do one more example here and let's go ahead and look at this. We want to now find in this case we're going to find moles from grams. So we're looking at glycine which is C2H5O2N and we want to find out how many moles so we're looking for the number of moles are contained in 28.35 grams of glycine. Well we got to do a little bit more here so our first step is to find the molar mass. And we know how to do that. We can't just look that up directly. We have to calculate it. So carbon, there are two carbon atoms, five hydrogen atoms, two oxygen, and one nitrogen. Now we can look up the masses of each of those. We can use those numbers here. And then we multiply them to get our subtotal. So we know how many moles, how, many, how much each of these contributes. So 24, 5, 32, and 14. Now, we can then add those up and we find out what the molar mass of glycine is and it is going to be 75.07 grams per mole of glycine. So now that we know that we can now do a conversion just like we did before. We have the 28.35 grams and one mole is 75.07 grams so again we're going to have less than a mole here. And when we multiply that out, we find it's 0.378 moles of glycine. So 28.35 grams in this case is equivalent to 0.378 moles. Now, the next thing we want to look at here is finding percent compositions of compounds. So the percent composition is we're looking for percentage by mass of an, each element in a compound. So if a compound contains, for example, hydrogen and carbon, there are going to be two percentages you look at. It's going to have some percent hydrogen and the remaining percentage will be carbon. So the percentage of hydrogen is just equal to the mass of hydrogen in the compound divided by the overall mass of the compound and then you multiply that by 100 to convert it into a percent. And you do the same thing with carbon, mass of carbon divided by the mass of the compound, multiply it by 100 again to convert it into a percent. Now we can look at examples to do this. So let's go ahead and look at one. We have a 12.04 gram sample of a liquid and it is found to contain 7.34 grams of carbon. 1.85 grams of hydrogen and 2.85 grams of nitrogen and we want to find the percent composition. How do these divide up? Well we know the values given in the problem and we put those up there and then we want to find the percent of carbon. Well we take the amount of carbon that we had and divide that by the total mass and we know that that was 12.04 grams. So 7.34 divided by 12.04 times 100 gives us 61%. So 61% of the mass of this compound would be carbon. We can do the same thing for hydrogen and find that it's 15.4%. And then we can do the same thing again for nitrogen and find out that it's 23.7%. And what you should find when you're done is that if you add these three up, you should get something about 100%. So if we look at these, we are actually going to get 100.1%. How can you have over 100%? It's just a matter of the rounding errors. If we'd gotten these in more detail and had more detail here, we could stretch that out even closer and get it closer to 100%. So if you do one of these calculations and get 120% or 80%, you know you did something wrong. But if you get something right around 100% like this, that's just fine. There are going to be some slight rounding errors, maybe into that one decimal point. Now we could do this one other way. So let's go ahead and look at one more example before we finish up here, because we also want to use the molecular or formula to determine the percent composition. 
So in this case, our little example here, we're going to look at ammonia, NH3. Well, we can figure out the molecular weight because we know there's one nitrogen atom at 14 atomic mass units. And we have three hydrogen atoms at 1.008. And if we add that up, we would get 17.03 atomic mass units. So we know how much the nitrogen is at 14. We know how much the uh, the, uh, the, sorry, the uh, hydrogen is at, one, at 3. And we can then calculate those. So the percent of nitrogen is the mass of the nitrogen divided by the mass of the compound, the molecular weight. Uh, of, of that compound and multiply it by 100%. And again, find out that it's about 82% that is um, that is going to be the nitrogen. So 82% of its mass is nitrogen. And then we can go ahead and do the same thing with hydrogen, multiply it by 100, get 17.76%. If we add these together, we would find that we get Again, something very close to 100. You always That's always a great double check on any problem like this. If you're not really close to 100, then you know that you may have made a mistake and you may want to go back and look at something there. But the answer will always be very close to 100%. Now let's go ahead and do a formal example of this. And let's go ahead and look at aspirin. Aspirin is C9H8O4. So we can go ahead and first, first thing we want to do is find the molar mass. We have to find what this is. So we have nine carbon atoms, eight hydrogen atoms, and four oxygen atoms. We can look up their atomic uh, masses here, here, and here. We can multiply them by the number of atoms involved. And we can add up our totals of 108 here, 8 here, and 64 here. And if we add those all up, we would get 180.154 grams per mole of aspirin. However, we can now finish out and do the percentages. Now that we found that, we know that carbon is 108 of those. So the amount of carbon we had here, the total mass goes down here. And we divide those, multiply by 100. And we find out that 60% of the mass of aspirin is carbon atoms. And we can do the same thing for hydrogen, find out that it's a little over almost four and a half percent. And for oxygen and find out that it's 35.52 percent. Now again, we can add these up just to make sure everything is correct. And if we add them up, we would get something very close to 100 percent. And if you notice, we add them up here we end up at 99.996%, little bit under 100%. Our last couple were a little bit over. This one is a little bit under, but again, you're looking at things very close. You'll be changing in those last couple of decimal places. You won't get things that end up at 95% or 110%. So it's a really good check when you are working on problems like this. So let's go ahead and finish up this section with our summary. And what we find is that we talked about the formula mass, which is just the sum of the individual masses of the atoms making up a compound. We just find a mole, which is the amount of a substance containing 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms or molecules. And we looked at the molar mass and of an atom or compound and it is numerically equal to the atomic or formula weight in atomic mass units and we were able to use that to determine some percent compositions. So that concludes this lecture on the formula mass and the mole concept. We'll be back again next time for another topic in physical science. So until then have a great day everyone and I will see you in class.